Hey everybody, today is a lovely day because we're gonna have another amazing London video of the channel. How exciting, I know. I bet you already smashed the like button, didn't you? Huh. Anyways, before we start, why don't you just let me highlight some of the key ideas that uh, we're about to see during this video. How to deal with the annoying early queen b6 move. What to do in order to win every single time against the old Benoni. How to always win a pawn against the Grunfeld setup. In game 4, we're gonna be dealing with the infamous Polish opening. And at the end of the video, I'll give you my recipe to start squeezing the kings and the end without allowing any counterplay. So with that being said, pick what you need. We have timestamps in the description so that you can skip to that part. And without further introduction, let's just jump uh, right into the action. All right, getting some white pieces. Uh, let's see if we can find ourselves a nice uh, little London. All right, people are going very aggressive on me today. Queen b6. All right, I'm just gonna be like, um, let's just keep developing. You can have that pawn if you really want it. I'm gonna go for the fork. Now knight d5 is the best move. Knight a6 is common mistake. Yeah, that's just a losing line. I think because of a3. Idea to play rook b1, uh, queen c1. Do I play the bishop's opening? I actually have a course about the Vienna, which is similar to bishop's opening, but I didn't really play second move bishop c4, frankly speaking. But knight c3 with bishop c4, definitely I have plenty of experience with it. Okay. Mm it's nice that opponent grabs such a pawn on b2 and then he starts thinking you, you love to see this like making such a risky queen move potentially you know your queen will never return home now he's just like okay let's pause let's think let's try to find some moves okay how do we actually trap him so rook b1 queen a2 rook b3 should be enough And then this is huge threat. He's gonna try bishop e6, but too late. Just way too late. Really, you wanna remember this trick, guys. a3, rook b1, rook b3, the queen gets trapped. It's that simple. He's gonna do knight d5, but then knight e2, knight c3. Pretty simple. Even bishop c4 there is crashing. This is just over. Look at this poor queen. Now you really should start asking yourself, is it really worth? Taking such pawns. I mean, maybe it is because I missed this. Hmm. Wait a minute. How do we win here? Is it simply bishop d3? Um, like the thing is I could just do that move, like bishop takes and then uh, take it with a pawn. Same thread remains. I think that's like just an easy win. Sometimes knight c3, queen c2, and just playing the end game after rook b7 is devastating. The knight's under attack. He's got to play like knight b8 only move. I feel like there should be better here. I think just bishop d3. He takes and we take it with a pawn. He plays like knight d5, but just... uh. Ninety two, I wanna say. C D E D. Ah, but then maybe Miss Garuk C eight. Wait, guys. How do we deal with this? Hmm. Okay, knight c3 once again, queen takes. Takes, rook b7, knight b8. There is like maybe simply knight b5 there and uh, we go for knight c7. Could it be? King d8, knight c7, then king c8. Not very clear. Huh. And if bishop d3... Bishop takes, pawn takes, 
95. That's the line that I kind of stumbled across. I was thinking 92, but then CD4. Oh, I've got to make a move, otherwise uh, the game will auto-resign. Holy! What's this? Okay, I'm going to play bishop d3. <laughs> Let's go with bishop d3. I don't know. Yeah. This might be a mistake. Hmm. So it's bishop takes. I think I really want to do pawn takes. And then his only move is knight d5. Even chess.com thinks he played too slow. Good joke. But I actually am. But just because I want to like really play this the very best I can. So we get the best educational value out of it. I hope you guys notice that. I'm not going to be playing like that in my like usual games. So He's got to take and play 95. That's what I know. The 92, CD4, I mean, where is my forced win? Maybe we just like finish development there and I'm like just overthinking it. It could definitely be the case, you know, it definitely happens. Okay, C4, wow, big mistake, just knight C3, win the queen. I can do that, but knight C3 simply. Boop. And we say goodbye to the queen. We don't care about the rook and anything else. We just take these. He takes that. Now what do I take? Pawn or bishop? What do you guys think is better? Well... I think just taking with a pawn is best. Because he was like taking my knight and then... Yeah, so he's got like, uh, what? He's got like rook and a minor piece for the queen. Once rook c8, bishop c2, so maybe it makes sense to play knight e2 and then uh, knight bc3. <laughs> that moment when you think three minutes about uh, the best move and uh, <laughs> your opponent just bl blunders the queen in one. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Pretty relatable. It's before Queen B3. <laughs> that was a good joke right there. I saw that. Okay, just Queen move. Whoopsies, that's a check. And that's a pawn. All my pieces are defending each other, which is pretty nice. Grab that, grab B7. Grab everything that we can. Is there like a hierarchy of moves to decide what's more accurate? Well, usually you just think about it like material wise. So material kind of dictates everything. That's usually just a big indicator. Can I just like push my pawns? There's no way he can get rid of my queen. Not that I can see at least. Uh, oh, just need to speed up. <laughs> you seem like a really fun uh, guy. I promise to save you from London hell. Wait, are you like God? Do we just have God in the chat? That's <laughs> that would be an interaction worth mentioning. Let's just take. I don't know why he just gave me his knight, but I'm gonna take it, I guess. Maybe it's a trap. I'll make a loft, making sure we don't get made it. Oh, he attacks my queen. This means I'll probably have to move it. And I'll just bring it back, so... Actually, c6 was not bad either, but... Um... Oh, 
Exchange, Tac, forgot about row B6, but then Queen C7 and all of his pieces are kind of uh, cramped. I was thinking of that, but we don't need it. Just here, ready to sack. Sacking my queen for rook, uh, for two rooks any day of the week. Maybe don't have to take. I would have opened his bishop. Make a luft. That allows me to infiltrate. Uh, I mean, queen f3, queen e6. Which one? Rook c7 next. Oh, come on. You cannot really play like that, can you? Yes, you can. Dude, this guy is like trying his best to like flag me. Never in doubt. <laughs> Got you, uh, GM Coase. <laughs> hey, Tucker Tommy, welcome to the stream. By the way, guys, any new viewers, make sure to join the Discord. If you, yeah. Every, every time you join the Discord, uh, you win a game against the England Gambit, so. Check if there was something better in the beginning. Uh, I mean... Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Let's check. That's a good uh, point. Answer 42 is not. Opening was interesting. Worth checking, so. Okay, this this much I knew from home. Uh, bishop c4 is a bit better there. Yeah, this could be a thing and just rook b1. I knew d6 is like so bad, but. Yeah, just it allows bishop c4 apparently and rook b1. But even this is usually typical theme to just play knight c3. And bishop f5. As I was saying, like, usually this type of endgame is crashing when he has to play knight b8 because it's under attack, and then you've got, like, something. But here it wasn't that clear. So I was like, all right, I guess it's bishop d3. And the main thing I was considering was, well, not his c4 move because that just gave me his queen, but I was considering bishop takes and then knight e5. And that's meant against knight c3. And I was thinking knight e2, and I couldn't see what to do on cd4. I was thinking maybe just go ED. He's gonna play rook c8, and I wasn't sure whether we can just simply castle. Or, well, perhaps we can just uh, win exchange there, and that's like winning enough. Has to give this up, because otherwise was losing. Wait, what is going on with my pieces? Yeah, and uh, extra exchange, castle, pretty straightforward. And okay, c4, just easy move, knight c3 in here. I mean, taking everything was fine. The rest was pretty simple. Hey, thank you for the sub, uh, Zweb Chess, appreciate it. Oh, by the way, uh, I remember you asked me about that Karo question. I mean, when they play bishop d3 there, you can just take the pawn on d4. Um, and then, yeah, it's just a pretty forced line that's fine for black. Just go queen takes d4 there on bishop d3. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Maybe I can show it on the board for, like, all the guys. Oopsies. If I, only if I kept not uh, messing up the layout. That would maybe improve the viewer experience a little bit. But I think this is already entertainment that it's big. So it cannot get better than these guys. All right, getting the white pieces against uh, 2083 American opponent. And we do get C5, my favorite opening to face. This and the Dutch is where I get the highest win rate by far. I mean, look at this. 
look at this. What is this? What is this disrespect? Knight on the edge. Okay. I mean, frankly speaking, it's not the worst thing he could have done because the knight is actually quite useful there since it's preparing the b5 push. So if I, if he plays knight f6, I've got to do a4, I feel, already, because b5 becomes an idea. I mean, maybe not yet, but I want to have it just to be prophylactic. And now, uh, well, b5 I can take, take rook, and then take with the bishop. So I think first we do go bishop c4. You can also start with a5, but no need to rush with that, I think. I'll just do the usual setup. Now, the difference to like normal lines is that with his knight committed, he doesn't have bishop g4 takes 97 e5 jump, which is usually a thing. And I think I'll just play h3 now, making sure his bishop is ridiculous. Um, yeah, just castle next. Hikaru cares, he just wants to be cool. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just castle and now he's ready to do b5. I mean, not really. We just go rookie one, take there and like pick it up with a bishop. No big deal. Now he wants b5, okay? Now this is already an indicator he may want to play it, so I'm just going to do this. How do we deal with knight b5? That is the question. Um, hmm. Can we just play e5? I feel like that's a good move. Takes, takes. Hmm. Knight f4, queen a5. Don't quite uh, love that. Hmm. I'm considering knight b1, but uh, I'm thinking maybe it's too slow. Okay, I'm gonna play it anyways. I wanna like shut down this knight. Play like c3. Like knight b1 is a common theme in these positions, so I think maybe here works just fine. It's a pretty hard move uh, to play, I know. That's why uh, I'm a genius and you're not. But still, hopefully you can learn something from this. So I'm just going to play c3 next. <laughs> and wait. I can start with bishop f4, but I feel like this pawn is a bit soft. Like in terms of, let's say he goes knight h5. So I'm going to start with that. Making sure both the knight and the bishops are now dumb. What are my main openings? So with uh, white, I basically only play London system nowadays. And yeah, against e4, a lot of Karo Khan. Uh, yeah, mainly Karo Khan, to be honest. But I can play like many things. I can adapt pretty quickly. I play like e4 as white a lot, and obviously I kind of know what to do with black as well. So, I mean, Karoslav, obviously King's Indian, it's like still one of my main, main openings. Always, uh, you know, he, the King's Indian guys, it's like, do you remember your first crash? I'm pretty sure you already get a person in your, um, uh, yeah. In your head right now. Um, I mean, you know, your first crash, like, aka your first friend zone. That's also how you can think about it. That's like, what's the King's Indian? For me, I'm like, always going back there. Okay, now, with this move, we don't even have to take. I can think about, like, uh, even though this is pretty juicy. <laughs> not gonna lie, like, he's gonna take with a bishop. And be it too. I don't want to, like, activate these pieces. I'm just going to do this move. Bishop f1, knight c4. That's what I'm playing for. You can also do maybe bishop d3. It's useful in fighting for uh, f5 break. Because he's going to, like, go rook there and try maybe for f5. So that's why bishop on d3 could be even more active, perhaps. Bishop f1 is usually nice, but just because he already has the pawn committed there, I'm thinking to go to d3. Okay, with this move, this may be an indicator that he plays there. Wait, bishop d3, can he do that? And e4? No, that doesn't work. I'm just going to go here, preparing knight c4. Even on bishop b5, I'm doing the same. If he gives me the bishop there, so be it. It's a pretty nice bishop. I'm going to take that, you know. 
Also, bishop b5, c4 is not that bad either. And then like knight f1, g4, knight g3, play like a Ray Lopez. Yeah, that, that might actually be the best way of doing it. Bishop b5. The quickest, and the strongest, and the fastest, and other impressive adjectives that you can think of. So, is he going to play it? I don't know. He may. Otherwise, what else to do as black, you know? It's not really a fun position to play. Like, he has to do that and that, but then uh, knight c4 comes to b6. Yeah, that's a risky free move. <laughs> what do you think about the French defense? In the, it often leads to the tricky position. I think French defense is definitely very interesting um, if you know what you're doing. But I don't recommend it for uh, low-rated players. If you are uh, below 2,000, I would really... Uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be your friend anymore if you're playing the French. <laughs> uh... I mean, French is fine, like, I have a rating climb about it. If you play it, like, I recommend it, which is not how most of the people play it. I think it would be interesting, but most people usually just end up... Um, yeah, I'm wondering, g4, h5, is that a problem? I don't know. I think I'm gonna do knight h2 against that. Yeah, like, most people try some fancy lines in the French, or like they play some weird old main lines and they just get a very bad and passive position from the opening and just very tough games, which is like super unnecessary. Just play the car, it's an improved French. Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, King's Indian is definitely the worst uh, opening for beginners as well. French and uh, King's Indian are a very nice mix, but... Uh, not for beginners. That's definitely... You cannot name an opening that's harder for black to play than the French and the King's Indian. <laughs> if you're looking for that, you manage to find them. Okay, how do I want to put my knights? I think I want to do this and then like F4 break. I'm confused. My Rui Lopez is kind of rusty. That's usually how it happens. Okay, now that he plays nonsense move. Just this. I forgot about b2 pawn, but then he forgot about d6. Now I feel like it's time to go for power play with e5. Take with a bishop. Ooh, look at this. So juicy. My bishop is so juicy, covering b2 as well. Rook f1 next. Sicilian is also tricky for beginners. Well, let's say Sicilian is not that bad, but... Um, Problem really is that um, they don't play the open Sicilian against beginners, so you have to deal with a lot of random stuff, which is making it pretty hard to learn. Uh, rook f1, bring the other rook, and knight e4 is crashing. Maybe just knight e4 next move, and that's kind of GG. There's just so much fury with the Sicilian. Well, it is, but it's uh, it's usually good uh, for black. Uh, well, wait a minute. I cannot really believe that he can get away with this. Queen F fate, dude. I don't buy this. That's gotta own. Just take now. Oh, he's got like bishop move that I missed. Forgot the rook is covered. Ooh la la. Uh oh. Made this a bit of a mess. But should be good. Got issues with g6. Okay, winning in the final position. Uh, completely winning before. 
I just forgot about this uh, little trick that he had. Okay, I'm still like completely winning here. Hey, Leon coach, welcome to the stream. <laughs> okay, guys, what do you think about this uh, Rui Lopez game? Was it like so bad? I think it was pretty interesting. The way we made the transition from that uh, old Benoni that he played with an Idon C7 where we were like kind of always better. But I'm curious what computer thinks about my Knight B1 move. That's like definitely the most interesting part. See, computer at first doesn't really have it on the radar. But I'm telling you, this is how Lila plays usually, just uh, rerouting this. We've got this idea mentioned as well in the London course. And now just see, plus two. He's got no moves. Okay, why would you ever play bishop b3 and keep the bishop on that diagonal? It makes absolutely no sense to me. <laughs> now just c4 was nice. Oh, by the way, we can just break on the queen side and that's like easy win as well. I didn't even consider it, but that's like uh, so easy. c5, just break it like in the king's indian. Imagine it's like a king's indian where blacks didn't even start to like get in f5 push. And we're already like breaking through, so... I was crushing, I was like more of a kingside uh, grind mode. Oh, that was like still, oh, I, I missed g5. Wow, I didn't even realize that the knight has no squares. I was just like slowly trying to, yeah, just push him. But okay, now e5 is just insane, I would assume. Yeah, just plus two once the position opens up. Okay, f1, very nice. And okay, here I just don't have to rush. Okay, 94 top line. But okay, it got a bit messy. Oh, apparently, I can just like get it into this end game and uh, take here because like knight covers bishop and I've got like so many extra pawns. Well, to be more specific, I only have one extra pawn, but it like looks so nice. When is the Jabava London course coming? It's a bit tricky with that because um, I already discussed about uh, many chessable projects incoming, but maybe I'll find the time to make uh, one curse on my own website or something like that. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, yeah, I hope uh, you find this um, Rui Lopez kind of squeeze uh, somewhat instructive. It's not really something that you necessarily need to be a big expert of. Just, um, you know, as a London system player, but it's nice sometimes when you get like so much space and you get to expand against this kind of, um, yeah, C5 lines where they give you the extra space. So, okay, okay, okay. Pretty happy about this game. Time to go for uh, uh, the next one. All I'm hoping for the next game is that we can just get a very satisfying London win. So please, can we do that? Let's focus. Okay. Get the knight out, starting with the bishop. Play c5 against this way. I like to play e3. This is my uh, main recommendation in the course. And when they play g6, it usually gets into pretty weird stuff. Okay, I'm going to do c3. Threatening ideas with dc5 usually, so... Yeah, okay, he just plays it this way. I'm not sure whether we can take in this particular move order. I'll just invite him to castle and then we have a transposition to the main lines of the Grunfeld where in the course we've gone over the uh, pawn captures on c5 move and usually white is just slightly better in these lines and whenever they play a5 we do go a4. By the way, we also had uh, a game in this uh, structure against the strongest female player uh, under 20. Uh, zoo in there, uh, which yeah, I played it like mm, maybe a month ago. It's on the YouTube channel. If you want to check it out, it was a pretty wild game. Uh, it lasted for like 150 moves or something. <laughs> uh, but here, now it's interesting because if knight c6 gets played with a pawn on a2 and the pawn on a5, h3 is a good move. But this makes me think whether we can just start with bishop b5 right away. And I think that's perhaps better. Just keeping pressure on the c6 knight. And 
I don't know. Usually, yes, h3 is nice because against that we can step back. But I was thinking maybe this could be reasonable as well. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm gonna go bishop g5, step back, black can get like an overwhelming center. That's kind of what we signed up for. And now that he plays it this way, I'm kind of starting to regret it a little bit for not playing h3, trying to transpose back into the main line. I was just like, bishop b5 looks so tempting there. Maybe not the best move. We'll see. We even had like this position against, I think, a GM. But that one was a bit similar. I think we had the uh, right move order there, however. And against that move, I want to just get my bishop back. Can we do that? Is g for a move? I mean, not really. Just knight f6 and... Okay, I mean, he can also take... Sometimes g4 is a theme, but not here. Yeah, I was thinking about, uh, like, sacrificing the knight, but it was not really good. Okay, now we're taking... We get a... We get an interesting position. I have no idea what is going on, which is usually a bad sign, but definitely double-edged. I'm thinking maybe I can try to slide the, the queen over to a3, but that's usually where the knight belongs. Maybe just knight b3 is a move. Thing is, he might just play b6 and try to sack in the near future. Mm. Okay, I'll just do queen c2, unpinning, maybe preparing long castle. Maybe I should just stick with short castle. Even though I have the file uh, with his bishop being there, it's pretty unlikely that we're going to get an attack. So I think I'm just going to take the mature decision here and castle short. I don't think the rook was really doing that much on the h file, anyways. And um, yeah, that's what happens, guys, at some point. You need to just grow up and uh, ignore these kind of open files. It's part of the process, okay? Trust me. If you still lose, it's part of the process. That's what they always say. Okay, just b4. Can we just do that? I mean, knight b3 is the other move, but. We can do b4, why not? Hmm. And then knight b3, trying to like stabilize everything. Undoubling the pawns is definitely feeling quite nice. I gotta be careful though, somehow not to get mated. He's gonna try like uh, queen e7 and push the pawn. I'm telling you that's about to happen. Or maybe not. This should be good, stopping b6. Maybe, yeah, queen e7 with the same idea that I mentioned. Now I was thinking maybe there is f3 break, or maybe just f4. Pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop back. Hmm. Man, it's like so weakening, but on the other hand... I think we have to do it, just uh, I don't know. I'll do a6. I feel like f4 is a bit too weakening, and with this move that I'm just uh, that I just played, I think we're just getting a bit uh, quicker play on the queen side than he does. Hopefully he takes, so we can gain a tempo and rook a. There is b5. B5, C6, Bishop, B7, I want to play. Wait, Knight, E3, or just C6? C6, Knight, C5, oh, that's what he wants, so maybe just Knight, B3. Uh, knight, B3, Knight, B4. Wait, did I already mess it up? What's this? So c6 he wants uh, the knight there. Hmm. Maybe just queen a4 still. 
Yeah, I'll just do C6. Big threat to do that. You can play knight b4, I thought just here should be good. The pawn feels pretty strong like anyways, even if he gets to take and maybe just rook b1 next, hitting the knight could be a thing. Can also take this way, try to pick up d5, could also take with a pawn, but then he wants e3. Ah, I've gotta watch out for that, but this is pretty big advantage anyways. I get to protect the pawn on c6 with rook c1. Yeah, I think I maybe just start with that. I don't even take. We don't need that. I mean, maybe it's actually nice to take it. What am I saying? You take what's free. I like to use that rule. And resign five moves later. Okay, this looks an uh, easy win. Yeah, just knight f6 and the queen is like uh, pinned. Just need to not get flagged and this one should be in the bag. Um, whoopsies. Missed the piece. There's a check. Uh, okay, we need some pieces into the game. Uh, how about the rook? Be good. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Gonna give a check. Gonna go queen e5. Maybe this is not as easy as I thought. <laughs> I mean, it is easy, but not like with this time. I'm just gonna like take his pawn and take it from there. That's a threat. Oh, that's a fat checkmate. All right, got this. Uh, only question that I have is, uh, well, uh, first of all, opening and then whether I was supposed to like actually play with, um, F3 or F4 instead of A6. I think I took the right path, but, um, yeah, I don't know. So, like first question of the game. Yeah, as you can see, both bishop b5 and h3. I think h3 is better just to yeah, avoid what he did in the game. Like, because normally I think he's supposed to do g5. Oh, g5, I've got knight d4 strong move now that the bishop is on b5. Okay, I was not aware of that. Then I think I like the way I played it. Yeah, I forgot about this strong move. Because I thought in the game I'll have to play bishop d3 and then it just goes like uh, e5, f5. Okay, maybe not e5 right away, but f5, something like that. Sometimes this is scary, but um... Okay, after I gave him the bishop, I'm apparently just worse. Well, it's a complicated position. E4 was a mistake for him because it gives me uh, D4 square for free. Then I like B4. E5 was a good move. And yeah, A6 was top line. Okay, b5 was uh, pretty good. Oh, queen a4 was blunder. Oh, he had uh, to switch the order. Oh, I missed he has bishop d4 and then e3. This is exactly what we try to avoid during the game. And then he had just knight e4 and uh, easy cleanup there. <laughs> Computer doesn't even take the bishop, just goes knight e5. <laughs> Pretty funny. The London is pretty good, uh, GM cost. Come on, what's wrong with the London? Gotta give me one reason why uh, we shouldn't encourage more people to play the London. Just give me one reasonable reason and uh, we can talk about it. It is boring to play against with black. 
Yes, I, I know it's like pretty goddamn boring to lose. I've been there. <laughs> All right, finally getting some white pieces. So hopefully <laughs> we can get a nice London game, but this guy just goes for the ultimate troll playing B5. Okay. You know what? You know what? We're gonna play the... The London anyways. Not even gonna try to like refute the Polish opening. Just trying to... Keep it interesting for our beloved series. He's gonna get the bishop into d3. Uh, okay, he plays d5. Gonna get castled. Let's play c3. I'm not playing for an advantage here, really. Just, uh, yeah, getting a game. Could do knight e5. Bishop d6, knight f7, typical trick. You will probably take. Hey, thank you for the prime. Uh, I mean, uh, gas. Appreciate that. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, just take with a pawn. Try to get some kind of an attacking position. Get my queen involved. So knight f3 is not bad, but like when you can get the queen in, it's even nicer. Knight f3, that's like one of the perfect London setups, like just having these pieces with like the pawn on e5. We gotta watch out for g5 now. Okay. Curious about that. Wouldn't be a big problem. I mean, I can do h4 if I wanna like be super cautious. Just gonna do h4. I could have played knight f3 as well, but feels like a nice prophylactical move. Get the knight around. He's gonna cast along. I mean, we don't really mind. He's still like gonna get under some kind of attack, it feels. And because we're controlling the king side, this means it's gonna be harder for him to attack. Now just go a4 now that he committed. It's opposite castlings. It's all about the attack, so need to speed up with that. I think his move is b4 now, but then c, b, and I don't know. Try to get some kind of attack. Maybe could also throw in a5 on b4. That's also on my radar here. Let's see. We've got a pretty wild game, but f6 definitely does not really feel like, uh, yeah, the play here because his king is going to be like so open. I don't know. I'm just going to take. Hey, thank you for the prime as well, uh, Lil Mentor. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you for that. Okay, we got the open file. That's something, a little bit of something to work with. Idea is b4. C4, we get D4 square. Hmm. It's like Bishop takes on B5 a move. I mean, trying to win E6, it's not really worth it. Not really worth it. Okay, just gonna go B4. No time to waste. Creating some tension. If he takes, I'm obviously happy because we get the open C5 for the rook. And, oh wow, he wanted G5. I didn't even consider it. What am I paying attention to? Can I just uh, step back? He wants f5 after, so I think we've got to take once. He's gonna do that, simply bishop g3 and f5, we go uh, queen g5. And we're chilling, I think, I hope, I don't know. You guys think I know what I'm doing, but I don't. So I'm just gonna go here. If I just do that, bishop h6, I've got queen e7, and the queen comes over this way. And now he's like really threatening that move, trapping my queen. Hoping that I don't see it, okay? Opponent has got like uh, no respect to me, like at all. I mean, why would he? He just uh, take. Ooh, I kind of uh, blunder that he could take with a knight, but maybe that was clever because I've got bc. 
Hmm. Is BC like a move? Like knight g4, cb. That should be a good endgame for me, right? Now, usually the problem was he can take with a knight on c5. But now that his knight is there, I think that's an interesting move. I don't know. An interesting <laughs> green trade. Now that he takes with a bishop, definitely not that scary to take there, which is yeah apparently like the only move. Otherwise, I lose the queen, so I'm going to do it. And gaining a tempo against the knight. Mm. Okay, he plays the knight there. He wants this, I bet. Now the question is, can I just play bishop e5 fully centralizing? Looks a bit risky, but it has to be completely winning. It's gonna go like rook g8. Then what am I doing? Is it simply bishop g6? Huh. Weird move. Weird moves ahead. It's like my queen is almost trapped. I was thinking queen h4 should do the job too. Definitely needs a bit of calculation, but uh, it has to be completely winning for me. So bishop g6, rook h7, or what he wants? Hmm. Queen h4, rook h6. Man, that's like... <laughs> Not that easy to calculate, but bishop g6 feels like a good move here. Just blocking everything. Rook is under attack. This is like only move. And then I'm like even considering the queen sack. Like the queen sack has to be completely winning, but I don't want a queen sack. I want something simpler. I don't know, guys. Rook h7, I mean, to be honest, he has no threat, so... I can also just do something like knight d4 there. <laughs> just kind of passing the turn. Oh, what? Bishop e7? What on earth? Okay, we take that. What on earth? Guys, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Opponent got even more confused than I was. Jeez. That's a real weapon right there. How can you, like... Uh, yeah. They can never, like, predict what you're gonna do if you have no idea what you're doing, so... <laughs> I think that's, like, the lesson for the day. And on rook h6 now, we just have uh, bishop e8. Hopefully, I'm not gonna get mated with rook g2 in a weird way, but... Actually threatening a bishop checkmate, which is not bad. Bishop c6, we've got uh, rook a8 uh, as a nice little trick. Yeah, look at this, guys. Oh, wait a minute. I think we've got queen d7. Wait. Oh, no, that doesn't work. I'm an idiot. So just rook a8 and then queen d7. Fine. I'll take these. Hey, thank you for the raid. Hope you had a nice stream, guys. Appreciate it, Adrian. All right. We actually got a pretty nice mating that year. Uh, oh, shoot. Oh, I, I thought I missed the bishop mate, which would have been a mistake, but uh, yeah, that was actually fine. <laughs> that was not a mate because he was escaping. Okay, game review. Curious about the um, score for this. Definitely not my best game, but it got the job done. <laughs> against the Polish opening. Uh, yeah, apparently Queen G4 was like a little bit of a mistake as he can start hitting it. Mm. He played H6, which, yeah, can simply be answered by Knight F3 as I thought initially, but just kept playing like Knight F3. Okay, A4 now was good. Okay, b4 felt like a good move, but I was like really allowing a lot of counterplay, it seems. So I should just do h5. 
just threatening to meet g5 with pawn takes. Yeah, I really forgot about g5. Then I felt like I had to open. And then look at this, bc5. Great move. How is that not a brilliant move? I don't get it. Like bishop e5 and bishop g6 has to be like completely owning him now. Yeah, it's like... He was playing rook h7, I would have done knight d4. I told you. Oh, apparently he's got bishop e7 there, so that's not so great. Yeah, so apparently there, top line is bishop d4. But I don't quite get it, why? Oh, because he wants to open up the file. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, of course, uh, pretty nice when they uh, blunder and you get a nice mate with rook a8, so... We'll take these. Finally a London win, but definitely not my uh, kind of favorite win. I usually like my wins when I have to calculate nothing and just, uh, yeah. Basically for me, so I don't screw it up, it has to be some kind of game where I know everything from home. Otherwise, it just gets all messy. I don't like it. <laughs> Was there bishop e3 and knight g3? I don't think he had anything. It just felt like... It was just way too slow for him. And even in that line, when you play knight g3, it's not the mating net because king has f2 square. Just let's say maybe somehow it works. But uh, yeah, it doesn't. Forgot the rook was hanging. His position was bad anyways. There. Hey guys, short break. Be right back in a minute. Okay, mm guys, we're one game away from 2100 and we're actually playing against a 2250 guy. So by far the highest rated player of the of the series and he does go for uh, the Fianchero. Going to be a pretty tricky game. Now, I do plan to add the Jobava update to the course. Um, I'm still like working on it. So for now, uh, we're just going to stick with a positional approach. Just go like 92 e4. See what he's got in store for us. In case of like uh, knight bd7, we play uh, bishop e2. Okay, I remember this. Now, it's ideal if we can meet that with knight takes. So I think queen c2 is more precise to have e4 defended. This is not a great move. Because then he's just going to give us the bishop. But um, still, um, yeah, usually when he has to take back with a pawn, we play that move win his bishop and we get the structure that is very nice very similar to what i recommend after c5 there is just dc and h3 so then he doesn't even get bishop g4 but um yeah here it's obviously very nice with the bishop pair just gonna do bishop e2 castle on e5 i don't think we're interested to take because he's getting a lot of play like maybe that works to be honest that might work I'm more tempted to just go back and, um, hmm. also this is a move, forcing b6. How do I want to play this? I can like actually maybe take this, I, I don't think we should buy the bluff. Takes rook 8 I've got simply bishop takes, and sure, he's got some compensation, but I don't think it's enough. Yeah, okay, I saw this, but... Just, uh, okay, even f4. f4, I don't think, um, obviously we can play that position with, um, opposite bishops and we're just better. Do you guys want to see the opposite bishops or just f4? That's the better move. I feel like f4 is stronger, but opposite bishops can be instructive. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do the best move. Just supporting the bishop. Nice idea. Okay, he's trying this. I forgot about this little trick, but I don't think it should work because f6 there is a check and uh, or like check and bishop d6. So probably he will resign uh, very soon. Oh, he wants that. I wasn't really expecting it, of course. But uh, I'm wondering what's wrong with king f1. Bishop e5, take it with the queen. This is GG next. I don't know if you guys see that this move is coming, but it's uh, it's gonna force queens off. 
So you know that. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, take that opponent. <laughs> okay, we can support our pawn just in time with the rook. King f2, bishop f3. Very simple. Exchange rooks. Wants rook d2, so maybe just king f2. If he checks me, I block with the rook. See, guys, easy. You see how easy it's actually to beat a 20 to 50. You may think it's like some kind of crazy rocket science, yeah, but. Okay, what we did, we just applied the uh, simple basic rules from the course, yeah? We just um, played Fury, this moves were Fury, okay. Whether you play h3 or queen c2, bishop e2 is not really that relevant here, but I just remembered queen c2 for some weird reason, because I analyzed it and it somehow got um, stuck into my brain that, oh, I, I don't know, sometimes I just get this kind of weird eye for details that... You know, I wish I had that in the main lines and in lines where it's like super important, but to me it's like, oh, a line that's very common for 1500 rated players. Let me just remember that perfectly. <laughs> that's how my brain thinks. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, play queen c2, c5, just to queen c5, because when he has to take back with a pawn, it's a very nice uh, structure. And okay, hold in the bluff. Now, taking is fine either. Oh, f4 was a mistake. Look at this, guys. f4 was a mistake. Let me actually... How is f4 a mistake? I can obviously go for the easy one and uh, trade bishops play the end game. Oh, I missed that. Uh, there is queen h4 check. I completely missed that idea. If there is no queen h4 check, I mean, white just wins. But uh, yeah, apparently I am supposed to just do this and castle or something like this. Or actually even better to start that way. Interesting. And then castle. Bishop on d5. Try f4, e5. If you can get that, it's just a win. That was smoothest. But okay, my opponent went for uh, for the sack. He clearly wanted f6, but missed that there is uh, queen d5 and then bishop d6 or something. So he tried this. And then, okay, after queen g5, forcing queens off. Easy end game. So, okay. Made it to 21. I hope. We got some like interesting themes, a variety of openings, and um, yeah, what can I say? Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit the like button if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the uh, upcoming videos.